large. I'm a content creator, an entertainer, an entrepreneur, and a college dropout. So it's actually really funny that I'm here giving a TED talk at a college. But before I get into the smart talk, I want to tell you how I got to this stage in the first place. So I started creating content when I was eight years old. And by content, I mean singing into my Samsung Galaxy Mini and uploading covers on YouTube. It was extremely cringy. And now that I think about it, I wish I had never done it. But eight-year-old me thought to herself, I want to be an entertainer when I grow up. But of course, my brown parents, dad sitting over there, he said, it might not be a profession, it can be a hobby. So then when I grew up, reality hit and I went to college. I went to Christ University in Bangalore and I took up psychology. Maybe it was a college, maybe it was a place, maybe it was a course that I was doing. Either ways, I hated being there and I had to find something that felt a little bit more fulfilling. So I started creating YouTube videos again. I realized that creative expression is something that's very important to me. And creating YouTube video was the only outlet that I had for my creativity. So then I started thinking to myself, okay, what if I can make a living out of this? But the thing with making a living out of creating content is that I would have to put all my eggs in one basket. And it would be a huge risk considering that I was in university if I were to focus on content creation, it would take up a lot of my time, a lot of effort, and my brown parents would not let me do that. So I thought, okay, either I have to make this work for myself and then drop out of college, or I have to focus on college and not focus on this. So then I thought, okay, what, am I, what, what could I possibly do to somehow make it balance? And then I also wanted to prove to my parents that I can make this work. So here, there were two things, an intrinsic motive and an extrinsic motive. Intrinsic motivation is when you chase personal satisfaction. When you're extrinsically motivated, you're motivated by external factors. In my case, my intrinsic motive was the sense of fulfillment that I got with creating content and the creative expression that came with it. My extrinsic motive was somehow looking for a reason to drop out of college and prove to my parents that I can make this work for myself. So these two motives, they pushed me to start creating content. And when I say push, it pushed, it really pushed me. For two months, I was consistently putting out YouTube videos, two YouTube videos a week. And that means I was also spending six hours a day filming and editing consistently. Every single day for six hours, I was filming and editing and putting out YouTube videos. And all of that hard work, all of that, that determination, I was very persistent. No matter what happened that day, I would still put out YouTube videos. And guess where that got me? Absolutely nowhere. <laughs> I actually gained 150 subscribers on YouTube and I thought, wow, all of that effort only to get 150 subscribers and I'm not even making any money. What am I going to do? I lost all of that time that I could be spending studying and my parents are gonna be so disappointed. So. I thought, okay, maybe this is not meant for me. Maybe I should give up. And I hate to say this, but I actually did give up. I gave up on YouTube. And that was until I stumbled across TikTok. So the thing is, in those two months that I was consistently putting out videos, I had made a habit out of pulling out my phone, recording videos, sitting down on my laptop, editing my content. And I had also picked up a lot of skills, editing skills. Um, I learned a lot about camera presence, scripting, creating hooks for videos and things like that. So when I stumbled across TikTok, I, I just decided, okay, you know what? Let me try this app out. Everyone's talking about it. Let's see what the hype is about. So I put out a few videos and next thing you know, I had 2.5 million followers. I was earning a significant amount of money on a monthly basis and I used my platform to start two new businesses. So imagine I actually gave up on creating content in general. But the thing is I couldn't because I was so used to creating on a daily basis that it became a habit and it felt weird in my body to not create anymore. So when I stumbled across TikTok, it was like YouTube was practice ground for me to just use all of that skill that I built on TikTok. Another example I can give you is my fitness journey, which I also learned that a lot of, a lot of you actually want to learn about. 
So I got from this to this in the span of nine months. And when I started this journey, I wasn't um, focused on a goal of looking a certain way or losing a certain amount of weight because I knew that if I focused on that, then my, my journey towards a goal would not be enjoyable. I knew that even if I wanted to get to that goal, the first thing that I would have to do is build a habit out of working out. I would have to somehow effortlessly incorporate exercise into my daily routine, which means I had to make it a habit. So I, when I started going to the gym, I took note of how I felt on the days that I went to the gym. I noticed that my mood was better. I felt a lot more confident and I, I felt very accomplished. I was very proud of myself. Okay, today I went to the gym and this feels great. I am proud of myself. So that feeling of accomplishment that I got with going to the gym, I chased that feeling for the next two months. Every day I was going to the gym just to feel good about myself. That was my intrinsic motive. That is until I hit a crisis in my life. I was going through some personal stuff and I had absolutely no motivation to get to the gym. And I'm talking like crazy anxiety. I would sit in my car and cry for hours. Like I would literally be in my car and just crying <laughs> and listening to sad music. And I still made it to the gym. Like I would be in my car, I'd be crying like, okay, time to go lift some weights. <laughs> but how did I do that? So in the two months that I was chasing that feeling of accomplishment, I had built a habit out of exercising. My body got so used to moving on a daily basis that it felt weird for me to just sit in my car and be depressed and not go to the gym. So I went to the gym and eventually I started seeing results at the gym and I was, that motivated me again. So that was my newfound motivation, seeing results. And I was like, okay, I'm getting closer to my goal. This is great, let me keep going. And then I finally did hit my goal. So with all of that being said, what is motivation? I've said the word motivation and habits uh, a bunch of times now, and I'm going to say it a couple more times. Um, motivation is a desire to act in service of a goal. It's, it's a spark that can ignite a fire, but it's not enough to keep it burning in the long run. It, it has a very, very limited shelf life. It comes and it goes. I'm not saying you don't need motivation. You need it initially to push you to start working towards your goal, but you cannot rely on it to get things done. So if not motivation, what actually gets you to your goal? And I'm sure you've heard, heard this a thousand times before. Consistency is key. And they say that because it's true. Being consistent is the key. On the days where you don't feel motivated to do something, that is the day you have to do it. That's persistence. So how do, we, how do we get going even on the days where we feel defeated, even, even if we don't have the motivation to keep going anymore? This is where habits come in. Habits are the invisible architecture of our lives. Habits, unlike motivation, they don't rely on fleeting inspiration. When you create a habit, you, you perform a certain behavior repeatedly over and over again, Eventually, it tends to occur subconsciously. Wow, all of that just right, and I just realized. <laughs> but habits are the key to achieving success. You perform the right kind of habits that are directed towards your goal, and eventually, it, your body would, you know, it would, you, it would get you to do it regardless of how your mind feels. So how do we build habits? Number one, we choose our habit. I think this is the most obvious step. Um, when you choose your habit, your habit obviously has to be related to your goal. For example, your goal is to have good skin. The habit that you need would be to stay hydrated, have your skincare routine, etc. Or if it's to start your own business or work on your own business, you need a habit of, let's say, waking up in the morning, opening up your laptop, sending clients uh, emails or talking to people, networking. There are certain habits that you need that would help you achieve your goal. Or even if it's going to the gym, you need to create a habit of getting to the gym in the first place. Number two, stay consistent and have a routine. So when you, when you, after you choose your habit, try to perform that habit at a certain time of the day. Say, 
even if it's going to the gym, I would recommend that you do it first thing in the morning. If not, maybe 2 p.m., maybe 3 p.m., maybe 6 p.m. But make sure that you do it at a certain time of the day or at a given situation in that day. And of course, consistency is key. This is also a pretty obvious point. Number three, celebrate progress, not perfection. Understand that habit building is a journey. It's not the final destination. Habit building, it, it requires uh, persistency, of course. And celebrating progress, uh, what I mean by that is uh, positive reinforcement. Every time you perform your habit, give yourself maybe a pat on the back or even a little, little treat. Positive reinforcement will ensure that the journey toward your goal is enjoyable. Number four, track your progress. This, I would say, is the most important step in building habits. How I like to track my progress is by journaling. And the thing with tracking your progress is that it'll give you an insight into your journey. It would, you know, you can learn your journey, if anything. You can give yourself constructive criticism, see where you're going wrong, see what you can do right. So for me, I use journals to do this. I would either have a, a checklist of like things I need to do, or I would have my ideal daily schedule written down on a book, and I would try to recreate that ideal daily schedule on the given days, and I would have the checklist to do it. When I started my fitness journey, this is something that I had used. I had three boxes, and not all of them said gym. It was either going to the gym, walking outside, or any other physical activity. My goal for the first two weeks was to just get my body to move because I wanted to get used to just moving and any, any sort of activity for that matter. So ticking off one box out of the three made me feel extremely proud of myself. I was like, okay, yeah, I did it, let's go. And yeah, so this is what I used. So with all of that being said, what I really wanna stress on is um, you cannot rely on motivation to get things done. You have to be persistent on the days where you don't feel like doing anything anymore. You need to get your body used to performing a certain behavior and keep doing it until it feels weird not to do it anymore. Get your body used to going to the gym. Get your body used to opening up your laptops, sending your emails. Get your body used to doing your skincare. Whatever it is, your goal, get your body used to performing the necessary behaviors you need to perform to get to your goal. So even if your mind is a mess, you're, you will end up doing it. So with that being said, let your body lead even when your mind can't. Thank you. That's the end of the talk. <laughs>